encouragement for the day for you, no matter when you read this, this prophetic word suits, fits, wear it, receive it in Jesus' name. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good things to the meek, the gospel that is, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and to proclaim the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion and to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Why am I doing all this? That they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And if you go to verse four, it says, and they shall be, they shall build. So Isaiah 61, one through three tells me, why am I, why am I anointed? Why is the spirit of the Lord upon me? It also tells you why people avoid the spirit of the Lord being upon them. Because when the spirit of the Lord become, is actually upon you, your life and purpose and mission will be driven towards others. It will be driven to preach, to bind up, or which means to heal, to proclaim, to proclaim again, to comfort, to appoint, and to give. It is so simple. If you want to be led by the Holy Spirit, or if you think you are led by the Holy Spirit, the proof is not just in the fruits of the righteousness of the fruits of the Spirit that come. It's not just in the manifestations of the Spirit. Those two things in their own right will be happening on a regular basis. If you do not see the manifestation of the Spirit and you do not see the fruits of the Spirit, then you are not being led by the Spirit. You may not actually be baptized in the Spirit because when baptized in the Spirit and the Spirit comes upon you, the Spirit will always lead you in all things. And the Spirit will always teach you in all things. When you've driven off, which we all do, no one can claim they don't. When we all follow flesh, carnality, which is death, which is defined as Satan. And, and ultimately when we follow that instead of the spirit, which is a regular choice that is made, it's not a once in a lifetime choice. It is, it is a once in a lifetime choice that you make once in a lifetime every day. You start fresh every day, make the choice every day. Why? Because haven't you seen it? Enough proof. Can we stop talking about this already? Go make the choice today to be led by the spirit, to pursue Jesus, to seek God. You are anointed. The spirit of the Lord has come upon you. If he has, if he hasn't, prayer, seeking him fixes that. But ultimately you receive him because you believe. It's very simple. Do not complicate this. Jesus is simple. The gospel is simple. The power in receiving the power is simple. Super, super simple. So you are anointed to preach the good tidings. If you say, well, I don't know what they are, just Talk about your experience with Jesus, the blood of Jesus, that you're saved. Talk about the salvation you've experienced. Keep it simple. Don't go out of your don't go outside of your pay grade. Don't go outside of your wheelhouse. Don't try to swim in the deeper waters. Don't try to elaborate on eschatology. Don't become what we've seen in America for the last three years and become a political preacher and not preach the gospel. Just preach the gospel. Just preach the good news. What's good news? Death is not good news. Doom and gloom is not good news. You telling people that you can pull them out of the pit, what are their problems in life? And how do you see Jesus can solve those problems? How did he solve them for you? Tell them that. Preach that. Bind up the brokenhearted. It's going to get challenging here. You're When the brokenhearted approach you, and they will, because these people that are in here, when the Spirit of God is upon you, will be drawn to you, and they will approach you on a regular basis. They will be drawn to you, Jesus went out and about, made himself available, and people were drawn to him. As you lift up Jesus in your life, these people will be drawn to you. As they are drawn to you, bind up the brokenhearted. Fix it. Take the power of the gospel. The power of the spirit of God that's upon you is there to bind it up. He didn't put the spirit there for you not to bind it. You heal it because the spirit of God's upon you. Don't get into anything else. Don't get into, don't get into any mental, mental thought process about that. You've been anointed. Fix it. You've been anointed. Fix it. 
say, hey, but I got all these problems in my life. Cool, fix those first. Go fix others next. That's what it says. The Spirit of God's upon you. Fix it. The Spirit of God's upon me. I'm going to fix it. The sick come across my path. The sick, now granted, they need to want to be healed. Let's not get down the road of, well, you know, I went by hospitals. I mean, I just walk in the door. Be led by the Spirit. But when the Spirit of the Lord's upon you and you're led by the Spirit, you fix it. You bind up the brokenhearted. Amen. The brokenhearted don't always want bound up. You can't bind up the people that don't want it. Jesus never did. And if you stay seeking Jesus, you'll see that Jesus never feel it fix somebody. He went by the pool, Bethesda people saved for his whole life. And nothing ever got fixed but one man at some point. So and and, and there's many, many examples of where Jesus walked by all the time and people were, but he went about doing good healing all. So how do we reconcile that? It's simple. As he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, they came to him. And you see that. As he was walking, approaching, and in their town, they came to him. Even the handkerchiefs that got laid in the street that they talk about from Peter, or the their shadow of Peter, the Paul, and the handkerchiefs. I, I get confused, but it, those people had to go to where those items were that were being used to pass that mantle, that healing on. Where that spirit of the Lord was working, people go to the spirit of the Lord. They will keep going. Bind them up. Fix it. It says to proclaim liberty to the captives. Your job is to proclaim deliverance, to pull them out of the pit. You're not. Your job is not to stand there and and just um, be a Christian counselor and and be there for them every single day and talk to them 44 44 minutes and you got to check the box and get them out of the pit by the Holy Spirit. Be a power upon you. Get them out of the pit. They will come out fast. They will come out fast in Jesus' name to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Acceptable year, Lord, the favorable year of the Lord. This is the year of the Lord. This is the year of the Lord. Just for the record, so you understand this, there's deeper teachings on all of these things. You can get into, I'm keeping it simple. It's the acceptable year of the Lord. The Lord accepts you this year. The Lord is working for you this year. This I'm going to keep this so simple for me because I don't want to get into, well, is this the Jewish holiday of the Hebrew calendar, which is all awesome stuff, but for simple this is the spirit of the Lord is upon me to do what? To proclaim the is the acceptable year of the Lord. This is the year all the debts are forgiven. This is the year the victories are given. This is your year to be debt free. This is your year to be set free from financial bondage. This is your year to be set free from that sickness. This is the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. We proclaim the day of vengeance. Uh-uh. And God's enemies, uh, we don't need to, we don't have to go vote against them. We proclaim, proclaim against them. I'm not telling you not to vote against them. I'm telling you the power isn't in the vote. It's in the proclamation against the enemies. I proclaim against the enemies that come against my ministry. I proclaim against the enemies that come against my business. I proclaim against the enemies that come against my future. I speak vengeance against them. If you come against me, I will proclaim against you. I will look right at you and I will proclaim against you. I've learned that recently and I'm implementing that in my life because I realized I've been empowered to do that and not doing it makes the stagnation of the power. And when power gets stagnant, it doesn't work. You have to release the power to comfort all that mourn. If they're grieving and mourning, what is comforting? Do not mix this up. This is not about you hugging every person that's dying. This is about you stopping death. This is about you stopping sickness. What does the Holy Spirit do to comfort you? He brings joy into your life. What brings joy, peace, righteousness? Jesus. This bring them comfort. Your com you, you are not the comforter. The Holy Spirit is the comforter. So you have to let him work through you in the manifestation of his gifts and of his of himself, which is really what that is. A manifestation of him in 1 Corinthians 12. 1 Corinthians 13, you have to love. 1 Corinthians 14, you prophesy. It's encouraging. It builds the church. Those three chapters make up what comfort is. If walking in the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians, that is what will make up you living in a way that is always comforting people. But the ultimate comfort is to live out 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Watch this. Keep it simple. This verse has a lot of meaning as well, right? All of them do. But to appoint. Go to church. Zion is the house. Zion is the house of God. I'm appointing you. You are accepted there. You say, well, we got to go to church. They have to have big welcome signs up. They have to have really good music. They have to have an inclusion theory. They have to have a, uh, a discussion. Uh, and they have to be against certain things in the pol political. No, no, no. The man or woman of God that has the spirit of God upon them appoints them unto Zion. Appoints 
Your job to disciple someone is to tell them you are welcome here. Nobody cares when they read your sign. Nobody's ever come back to church because they said, oh my God, did you know you have a really cool welcome home sign outside? I couldn't wait to get here. No, nope, not happening. They walk through the door, go read every Google review. As I'm out of town, I travel a lot, I look for churches, I read the reviews. Not because they have meaning, I just, they're right there to read them. I don't do it intentionally, believe me. And they all talk, talk about, somebody said hi. The word was pretty good, but the second thing is always the word. The first thing is always some human being said hello to them and, and, and engaged them. What is that? To appoint them, the, to appoint them, to appoint them, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Come on. You get people to the house of God and you start reading about what Zion's like and the church is like. And look at the church. If you went to somebody and said, you are welcome. And you grabbed me. Come on, man. We're going. I'm appointing. You are appointed. Now, there's a deeper meaning there. As the Spirit of God's upon you and you walk by and you'll cast a mantle on somebody. Yeah, you, that's all part of it. But the, it, let's start it off simply with the Spirit of God upon you to appoint them that mourn to Zion. Hey, you are going to the house and I'm appointing you to this house and go there. You walk away from somebody you led to the Lord, the spirit of the Lord's upon you, lead them to Jesus, but don't appoint them to Zion. They're dead. They're dead. It, they, they, that, you see people all the time out there. And one of the things the gospel script that I use has on the bottom is invite them to church. Invite them to church. You watch Bishop Oyedepo out in Africa or in Enche, any of these, or uh, Bayou, any of these gentlemen and ladies that are out preaching the gospel out there, they are inviting people to Zion, appointing people to Zion, helping them get converted and then established in the church. That's a phrase that he uses often, Bishop Oyedepo, and I love it. Appoint them that mourn to Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes. Now watch this. Your job is to give the beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. All of that, that is your job. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you to give the oil of joy, to give the, to read it and just meditate. The beauty for ashes. What more when you give the Holy Ghost? Do you give all these things? When you give them the free gift of salvation in Jesus Christ and you offer them the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you baptize them in water. This isn't, baptism in water is failing in the church and it's becoming a, uh, a an event because the church has lost the meaning because discipleship is not baptizing. Churches don't baptize, people do. A building doesn't baptize, people do. And when you lead someone to Jesus, your job is the baptizing them in the Holy Ghost, your job is to baptize them in water. And your job is to at least pray with them. I, I baptized a man in the Holy Ghost a few weeks ago and I was thinking, you know, if we didn't have water with us and well, I said, his next thing, he's got to find some water. The very next week, within a three days, he was at a church that said, time to get baptized. And I said, see, it, and I told him, I said, God will always work out his three beginning steps, the same for everybody. He will get you filled with the Holy Spirit. He will get you believing in Jesus and he will get you baptized in water. Why? Baptism in water is critical for you not to mourn because it's not an outward mark of an inward reality. That is hogwash. It is watered down. That is, that is not, it's not a symbol of your faith unto the world. That is hogwash as well. It is you dying, your flesh dying. People are dying because of their flesh because carnality equals death because they're forgetting because baptism has been watered down. That's a terrible thing to say and you're getting baptized, you actually get watered down. But baptizing is being uh, meta metaphorically watered down so that people don't realize you are dead and you've risen again in Jesus Christ. And if you are dead and you've risen in Jesus, I can't even say it without smiling. You've risen up in him. And if you've risen up in him, all these things, and I know a few of you that are watching this got a lot going on. You got a lot of worries and you got a lot of anxieties and you're concerned because you forgot you died in him. You forgot, what do I do about this? What do I do about that? What about the kids? What about my family? How do I do this? And you know I'm talking to you right now. Rise up and be alive in Christ and let the old things be dead. Let the old man be dead. They walked up to Jesus after he had had the Holy Spirit's power. Before that, at 12 years old, he went where his mom and dad told him, when he wasn't about his father's business and it aligned. He went where his mother and father and sister and brothers wanted him to be and went home when he was found and told to go home. When he hit 30 and got filled with the Holy Ghost, got filled with the Holy Ghost, they said, who's your mom, brother, sisters? And he said, you are. You that do the will of God in heaven. 
the pathway to mourning and being free is appointing to Zion, the pathway to oil, the pathway to the oil for joy, for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness is, is from us to give them, to give unto them the beauty for ashes. That's Jesus. That's the Holy Spirit. That's the baptism. That's teaching them about faith. That's running through the fundamentals with people so they have a quick understanding. Said Jesus had a quick understanding of the fear of the Lord in Isaiah 11. A quick understanding by the Holy Spirit's empowerment over you. You will make people of quick understanding in the gospel. They will receive Jesus quickly. They will be empowered in the Holy Ghost. They will be baptized in water for the completely immersed so that if you don't, and if you had to just throw water on somebody to get it going, nobody's gonna, God's never gonna go. He only gave him two sprinkles. No, they died when the water hit them and they rose up to a new man. You've been empowered to go do that. You're gonna point them to Zion. This is discipleship. I'm so excited. I'm prophesying to you today. Go make disciples fall in this simple, simple three verses and have an explosion in your life of the Spirit of the Lord being upon you in Jesus' name.